Right, so uh, welcome everybody to this hands-on workshop, um, advanced usage session. Um, delighted to be joined by uh, a number of colleagues. So I'm going to be joined by Lim Wei He from University of Sheffield, Vincenzo Real and Amanda Williamson from Arup, Paul Shepard from University of Bath and Tom Pritchard from Limit State. In terms of the, the program for, for the uh, event, um, I'm just going to provide a little bit of background um, initially, and then the main part of the, the workshop is going to be hands-on with Peregrine. So Lim Wei He is basically going to go through a series of um, examples. And those of you who have um, installed the, the software, um, as per the uh, instructions via email, um, we'll be able to follow along um, with, with Limway at that time. And then we'll wrap things up with a panel discussion um, looking at where next for, for Peregrine and for, for layout optimization more generally. So it looks like to, it's going to be a very uh, interesting um, event. Um, for those of you who wish to um, participate hands-on, um, then there are some prerequisites. You need to have Rhino 6 installed, and also you need to install the, the technology preview version of Peregrine um, on your computer. So on the Eventbrite uh, event page, there's download links, and also in the emails that were, were sent uh, um, yesterday, um, you will have the link to that. So hopefully, You've done that. If you haven't, you've got a few minutes while I'm providing a bit, bit more introduction to get your machine um, in good shape. Um, the other thing to say is during the hands-on parts of the, um, the session, we encourage you to ask questions. So if you have any issues, um, click on the, um, the question box and it will expand and you can ask ask questions. So we've got a number of people behind the scenes here who are waiting for your questions. So don't suffer in silence. Please do um, ask those questions. Um, what I'm going to do um, shortly is is, is just, um, well, perhaps after I've, I've given a, a little bit of um, introduction, I'll put a poll and just see what proportion of the, the audience are going to be um, aiming to follow along. And which of you just wish to, to watch this session as a normal webinar. Um, but first of all, I'll provide a bit of background. Um, so the first thing to say is this webinar, I'll say this event, is um, organized by um, ICARE, the Integrated Civil and Infrastructure Research Center, which is a new University of Sheffield center. And the focus is on transforming um, construction from the point of view of things like resource efficiency and also acting as a catalyst for the introduction of technologies capable of uh, delivering um, big changes in the design and also fabrication operation of physical infrastructure. So it fits in very well, um, of this, this event fits in very well with the, uh, um, the remit of iCare. Um, another bit of background is just to um, say that the, the Peregrine plugin was really um, developed and originally for, uh, during a um, UK government research project involving a number of partners titled Computational Design Optimization of Large Scale Building Structures, involved a number of universities, so Sheffield, Bath and Edinburgh, and also a number of companies. And then the, the more um, sort of publicly ready, friendly version of the plugin has been developed as part of a, um, a follow-on project involving University of Sheffield, Arab and Limit State. And version four is a sort of a product of that uh, follow-on project. Um, I, could, I, I, I could spend a lot of time talking about our motivation, but I've, I've distilled it down into, um, into, into one slide here. So it's a nice one, jealousy. <laughs> our mechanical engineering colleagues um, have over a number of years developed um, 
powerful tools to allow them to remove weight, for example, from components. So you'll see lots of glossy images like the one on the left showing how you can use the poly optimization to redesign um, a humble bracket. Um, the question is, what can we um, make available to designers in the structural engineering domain? How do we um, pick up a, you know, a humble uh, multi-story building of the sort that you can see on the right-hand side and, and shave material from that building? How can we um, do our bit um, in the, the current climate crisis? And so what we wanted to do was to make available um, or um, develop and um, propose tools that could be used to address that second issue. So our initial focus was definitely on trusses, starting with, with simple ones. Um, we developed a, a two-stage process where you use conventional layout optimization, as, as you can see on the left and then use geometry optimization to rationalize the structure and simplification techniques to um, reduce the number of members and joints um, to make it more practical. So that was our initial focus, but there are clear practical issues. In that last example, it might be simplified, but we've got an element that's in unstable equilibrium and another element which looks like it may be prone to the buckling. So in this advanced um, usage session, these are the kind of things that we want to uh, look at addressing, and we have features in the new version of Peregrine that will hopefully help us do that. Out of interest, this, um, this image that you can see on screen was um, was produced using a, a web tool that was developed as part of the project. So if you go to layout.com, you can very quickly and easily replicate this kind of problem and any other that you may wish to imagine. Um, in terms of um, the basic layout optimization formulation, um, it's a really simple one. So this is the, um, the formulation that sort of underpins a lot of our work. What we're trying to do by default is minimize volume, so in other words, reduce the, the amount of material consumed in a given design. And we use simple mechanics along the way in getting there, so equilibrium and yield conditions um, to ensure that we, we, we have a structurally sound um, outcome. And the problem variables, area and internal bar forces, as, as you can see there in that slide. What we've needed to do in the new version of Peregrine is expand our remit, so to speak. So if we're looking at local buckling, then we have a, an additional nonlinear constraint, which takes into account of the fact that members in compression, um, if they're inadequately proportioned, are liable to buckle. And also, that add a additional global buckling constraint that you can see on the right-hand uh, column there. The downside, particularly of the latter one, is that it does affect the computational efficiency. So it does take significantly longer to obtain solutions. So at the moment, it's not something that you can apply um, to all problems. You have to uh, be a little bit selective. But Limway will will talk you through um, applying that, um, that new functionality. Um, the other thing we've done and we've needed to do is move beyond just, just trusses. So we've got in the new version, beam grillage, layout optimization functionality. So what we're doing there is finding the widths of beams of a given depth. Um, Mathematical formulation, fortunately, is very similar to that for trusses. So it's very efficient. And what we can do is combine the truss and the grid optimization to allow, for the first time, whole buildings to be um, looked at. And got a, a very simple uh, example 
churn on screen there. Um, so on the left hand side we have um, a optimized grillage where we've got uh, a plan view basically and we've got the, the beam widths shown and what it would ideally do if it had if it had four columns to use and it was just carrying vertical load is actually place those columns centrally on the faces and also it would vary the the thickness of the um, the beams as you can see if on the other hand you have a more conventional layout with four columns at the corners and also as is conventionally um, used you use prismatic sections so they don't vary with length then you end up with quite a remarkable increase in um, volume. So, so the, the, the structure on the right is five times, or so more than five times the, the, um, the volume of the structure on the left, which just shows you um, what the potential is um, for saving material in this sort of case. Okay, so I'm gonna hand over now to, um, to Limway who will um, be able to um, move into the, the hands-on part of the, um, the, the session. So I'm just going to make you presenter in a way. Right, can you see my screen now? Yes, perfect. Okay, good. So, so today I will basically be showing four features of the new plugin. So as Mapper mentioned, we got this um, global and local stability incorporated in program. And then we got two examples to show those. And also we have our new grillage optimization. And finally, I will basically um, go through a, a slightly more complicated design problem, which will basically allow us to combine the grillage and the chassis together to, to design a holistic building. And um, before I start the, um, the, 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 the show, and I would like to say something about the, the plugin at a moment because um, it's an, still an early assess version, so it might have some bugs. And we do know there are some issues. So one of the, the big issues is the Grillage optimization has not yet been fully compatible with all the um, other very advanced features such as the stability and simplification and buckling. So we plan to adjust this in the future, but because of the, uh, the time limit, and we can't do it at this time. And also, we found some limitations in the multiple design domain problems. So here, I'm showing one very simple example. So if you got two separate design domains, then the edges have to be matching each other. So in this case, I mean, if you see the, the second case, if they are actually slightly offset, and in some cases, the um, the two domains might not be linked. So that's the uh, the limitation and we are aiming to adjust this issue. So now I will basically uh, go back to Rhino and Grasshopper and start to open our first example. If you go to your example folder, you'll be able to see four folders here and then the first three examples will be from the uh, feature demo folder. And if you are following the, um, if you're trying to open it on your machine, then if you go to your desktop, you might not be able to see the, uh, example, if you go to the desktop, you might not be able to see the example folder. So that could be a problem. So the ideal way is to basically go to the folder and drag it to the, um, to the grasshopper like, uh, panel. So, something like that. So for example, I would just um, open the folder in my like computer explorer and then go to the feature demo and you see lots of example here. So the first example we'd like to see is the um, post process global stability. So if you drag it to the canvas, you'll be able to see the um, some, struct some, some solutions here. So that is, that isn't really much you need to to do at this moment because basically this um, this new global stability like a post processing step is quite straightforward. Basically, we 
put a new component which is called stabilize then if you have an unstable structure like you can see um, the one on the left and you can see it clearly has two planar structures and you only need to connect it to the uh, stabilize component we will then try to run this uh, optimization with global stability constraint and it will add some bracing members here although this is a very very simple example and um, yeah and it, it basically tells you how this plugin is working and how this new component can do so that's probably um, everything about our first example and we do have some advanced controls but they should be mentioned in the manual so if you are interested then you can probably look at the manual and know more about it so I won't go too far about this example and uh, then we can move on to our next example and um, which is the um, local global st uh, local stability so for those of you who have used program before you will see this OLA buckling uh, it's a standard OLA buckling and now we introduce a new example which is called OLA buckling 2 so if you open that case then uh, we'll be able to I mean I something I need to mention here I actually changed my um, solution slightly to be um, a bit easier for me to describe the problem so if you open it in your like run a grasshopper environment we'll be able to see the the result directly so but here I would just like to show the difference so I actually uh, not showing anything here now and also I haven't enabled all the buckling at the moment so if I if I directly solve the problem and you see um, structure and that's one of the issues that we, we know in the previous version you get lots of long and stride members coming directly from the loaded point to the support so if we enabled all the buckling constraint it won't do anything more than that because because in the previous version all this um, the buckling is only considered in the post processing step so if you got lots of low members coming directly to the support and the post processing step won't be able to pick it up out and fix it so the new feature is actually uh, added in our solver component so if you double click the solver you will be able to see um, a new option which says uh, all the buckling layout optimization so this will actually um, allow the optimizer to try different scenarios and try to incorporate the things in the layout optimization phase other than only in the post processing step so if you enable it and solve it you see it's actually going through different iterations and try to find a series of solutions and the best of the, the candidates will be picked so if you look at the result now it has fewer members coming directly from the loaded point to the support and you will be more likely to see these uh, branch-like structures so that's the um, the new OLA buckling feature in Paragon. And something I also need to mention is um, this feature is still in development and it's a sort of a experimental feature. And sometimes it works and it's not guaranteed to work all the time because in this approach we use some heuristic approaches so it's not as robust as the um, layout optimization. And of course it will provide an alternative option so if you can't find any um, sensible structure if you directly tackled with using layout optimization you get lots of long members you can try to enable this option and hopefully you will get a better solution so I think that's probably everything for our example here so now I will move to the, um, the new feature about the uh, Gullage optimization so again, if you if you go to this uh, feature demo folder and uh, there is an example called Grillage two-part table, and if you run that one, you'll be see um, quite a boring table-like structure. But so I apologize for. For the workflow it's a bit messy at the moment and we didn't 
got enough time to tidy it up and also partly because we are actually improving our, our components so we didn't think that's the final form of this um, this component so apologize for that so the only thing different actually from the trust design and the grillage design is now in the design domain component you have an option so if you select grillage then you will basically think this is a grillage domain and it will use uh, banding members instead of trust members and also if you enable grillage it will actually allow you to set a new parameter which is the, the depth of the grillage so this is a um, sort of a very boring problem then we can hopefully make it more interesting for example if we we create some points for the more support so here you, you can see um, we only add like a vertical support at four corners so now we try to to add some some supports at the mid span of each edges so if you double click the canvas and type meet then you can you can find the component which allow you to find the middle point of a curve then if you select this um, if you connect the seg segments to this new component and uh, to our points you see we actually have our like uh, four four new points and we can first try we um, we actually uh, remove all the corner points and we only have the uh, the edge points then if Lim you... Limway, can you just zoom in a bit more on the on the components? I think they're quite difficult to read on the yes, excellent, thank okay, you. The resolutions, yeah. Is that clearer? That's much clearer, yes, thank you. Okay, good. So there's a another trick in Grasshopper. If you if you click if you press control and shift, you can basically um you can move the whole bunch of wires instead of a single one. So in this case if you just directly move it to a point then you will reconnect everything to the, the vertices to our new point and you, you can see uh, all the um, the columns have changed to the mid span of the uh, the edges and you, you get a different design and you might wonder that you can't actually see anything different because um, the reason is we actually have a quite a deep depth of the beam so the width of the beam is really, really small so if you want to see a clearer view or if for example, if we put some realistic numbers, then we will see something differently. So here, I'm just trying to change the, the, the structural depths to 0.5, for example, and connect to depths. And then you can see um, you got some, some tapered beams instead of all these tiny ones. And we can see if we connect all the points. So now we have our edge points, and we can, of course, also connect the uh, the, the edge point, uh, the, the the vertices. So if you shift, press shift, and connect the the vertices to our new point, you will basically add this this more more points to the support. And you can see the uh, the grid changes again, and you get again a different layout of optimal grillage. So in in this particular example, actually uh, we have two like a grillage um, areas for the the pressure load. So you can see here we actually um, have two meshes. So if I can, if you uh, double click the canvas, I can can actually uh, show what the um, the design domain looks like. So if you select a list item, for example you can actually see what are they so you can see our first region is actually a smaller square area here and the second one is actually uh, the other one which uh, is outside of this um, this square area so at, at the moment all the pressure load is applied on the entire surface and of course you can only apply it at some areas like a patch loading so in this case if we we say we only apply the the, uh, the pressure load on this um, tiny rectangular area then we can basically replace it then you see we get um, slightly different well very different solution and of course you, you can you can do lots of other parametric studies and 
try to uh, to see the different designs and compare the, the solutions. So that's basically, uh, I think, um, should cover most of the things for the uh, the Grillage optimization. That's really nothing uh, more special than the charts, and the only thing different is you only need to say this is a Grillage domain, and it will just now you can apply the out of plane like loading to the plane. So now I will probably move to the uh, the final. Is it worth you just uh, uh, doing some other um, parametric changes? I'm just concerned people are trying to keep up with you, Limway. It might be it might be struggling. So if you perhaps just just ch change some of the um, perhaps look at the mid column solution for this one as well. Just yeah, so people have I, a chance to keep yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it's, um, you can you can do whatever thing you like. For example, you just uh, if I only have the um, the the the, uh, the nodes at the uh, the four corners, you will get again a different solution. And also something you realize is um, it's not fully uh, symmetrical. And one of the problem is the, the structure is not determined. So it it basically um, that means that multiple or infinite low pass and the layout composition only finds one of them, one of the best. So that that's the reason why sometimes you see it's not symmetrical. And another thing you can you can actually tidy up the solution is, for example, um, if you use the previous version of program, you know there's something called join cost. And in charts composition, we basically we favor long members other than the short members. However, in Grillage, sometimes you do want to keep these short members other than these very very long members. So one thing or sort of a trick. Uh, you can use is to create a panel or any any number thing and if you put a negative value for example 0.01 something like that so basically it's not it doesn't have any physical meaning of the um, the cost of a joint it's basically a penalization factor in the optimization and ask the optimizer to favor short members for example in this case other than the uh, the long members so if we connect to it you get a different design this time, so that loads of things you can you can play and um, and the solutions are all equivalent to each other. So hopefully uh, that will cover most of the uh, the usage of the Grillage optimization. And uh, again, it's it's something quite simple, and you only need to replace the uh, the design domain with the uh, uh, you only need to set the design domain to a uh, grillage. So now I think it's. I think mm. the, the other thing to say is that th these results you've obtained very very quickly. So it, it's the same simple linear formulation as for the trusses. So we can expect to get solutions very very quickly. Un unlike the um, some of the stability examples, which which can take longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Arthur is uh, absolutely right on that. So this is using exactly the same, like linear formulation. So you you do have all this um, benefit for speed, and also you can you can you can create lots of different scenarios for parametric design. And probably time for me to move to the uh, to the last example, or probably more complicated. I don't know how much time I need to spend on that example, but yeah. You've got plenty of time. You've got 20, 20, 23 minutes. Yeah, but the last example is quite complicated, isn't it? <laughs> so the last example is not in this feature demo folder. It will be. It is in the um, so-called other examples. So if you go to the other examples, and there's one file called holistic building TV. And if you open open that one, you'll be able to uh, to see something. It takes some time to render the the, um, the building, unfortunately. <laughs> so if you zoom out the workflow, you can see it has several parts. So I will basically go through each part and let you know what each part is basically doing. So basically, um, the first part you need to basically specify the geometry. I will go to the details later, but the geometry of the the floor plans and the height and the number of floors, 
for the um, for, for the building, and then you need to um, basically split your design domain into proper like uh, faces for Paragon, and we will come up to this later. And then there's normal like loading and support like like uh, groups, and then we actually um, need to assemble all the um, the faces in program and that there are some particular requirements on how you provide information so program can recognize those so if you look if you check the um, the components we only need like trust 2d domains which is for the um, for the faces for the uh, the bracing designs so they will be the uh, trust 2d domains and you, you need this um, Gwillage 2D domains for the floors and of course we also need our our trust 1D domains which are basically uh, all the lines which is which can be used as columns. Uh, so, is it worth zooming in on the on the component because people's monitors are not not high resolution so the new component we have the new domain com component has just got two options. If you just zoom in so people can read the, yeah, so it's now able to just choose whether it's a Grillage domain or a Trust domain. So that that's the uh, obviously a new feature in this version. Um, so you but you need to, you need to uh, decide in advance. Mm -hmm. The key. Yeah, which which is Trust, which is Grillage, basically. Yeah. So. Then the optimized part is basically identical to all the other Paragon examples. So the key thing for 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 for, for this um, building design is you need to provide the correct formats for the uh, design domains. For example, you need to slice all the um, you need to provide the slice of floors for the uh, the village, and of course you also need to provide all these smaller faces. So it, it it can it can do optimization, and I know this this will be um, sometimes tricky for all sorts of buildings. And uh, instead of uh, instead of basically uh, programming everything like a black box, and you get everything together, and I I decided to uh, to use a different route, which is to basically create this cluster or package in Grasshopper, so so again, if you are not very interested in how it is done, then it doesn't really matter. However, if you do have some requirements or you have some, some special uh, settings for your building design and you need to change the workflow or change the way how it creates the floors and um, and the faces, then you can basically, uh, for example, double click a component then you can actually go into it and see how it's created if you are interested in it of course and you won't so we we provide this this um, sort of uh, packages to allow you to um, simplify your workflow so so it doesn't have lots of wires coming through and everywhere and very complicated logic so here I've tried to make sure that the logic is simple enough, so you don't need to uh, to worry too much about it. And of course, like I said earlier, instead of making these things in a in a, a, a Paragon component, we actually uh, make it as a, a Grasshopper component, so you can edit it if you need to. So that's I think time for us to uh, to actually solve the problem and see what what happens. So if you go to the uh, optimize, and if we enable the uh, layout optimization solver again you can see you can very quickly get a solution and which um, which actually has both the grillage designs and the uh, the bracing designs and in this case for the bracing design I only have one wing low case so you can see it's not very symmetrical for example there's no bracing here on this face and there will be some some bracings there and something you might notice that uh, on the top floor you can't see you can't see any bracing member, but it's it's because it's filtered out. It's actually there, so that's a sort of a non-issue. And uh, and actually, uh, 
yeah, it's not the wrong answer. It's because it's not showing the uh, the pricing member there because it's so small. And and the way you can add multiple load case, for example, for the wing load, you, you want to um, to add more wing load cases, and you can directly add it to this um, again this cluster or this pre-made component. For example, if I if I add if I just copy this um, this slider and add another wind which is going from the uh, zero degree and press shift and connect to this direction input and now you can you can get a warning message it says now you get two locuses do you wish to continue so if I click yes then you are basically um, add another low case for our problem. So hopefully this is um, simple enough for you to start playing with the uh, the, 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 the new like a uh, holistic building design example and probably uh, it's worth mentioning how you actually combine the wind and and the, uh, the, the self weight loading. So basically um, in the, um, the wind load we actually create a tree structure which which each each branch is a low case and here I actually put a Python like a component to combine this wing load with our gravity load so that means each wing load will be uh, combined with another with the same gravity load then we get two merged locuses so that's how it is done And um, yeah, and you, of course you can try more locuses and, and see what happens. And the other thing is uh, probably I should mention the, uh, the geometry part of the uh, the example and how you create the uh, the geometry. So so here we only need to specify the uh, the floor plan using this polyline. And of course, the uh, the tower part you get a smaller one, so a smaller one. And then for for each each block, so the block I mean is the uh, for example this 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 building for me it has two blocks. One is this uh, this base levels, and one is the tower. So which block you need to specify the the height of each floor. For example, here we got four meters, and also the number of floors you have. So in the first one we got three floors, and then if you have a second block, you can basically um, do the same thing. And of course, because these two two buildings, these two blocks needs to be linked together, so you need to um, to link this floor data component to the second one, so it knows the first block. And again, this floor data is. Um, so again, it's a, a cluster and programmed in in Grasshopper, and it, it basically, uh, if you enable, if you preview it, it basically takes the uh, the polyline and extrudes it in the uh, Z direction, and also at the same time it knows all the splits. For example, the uh, the, the Z basically in this case is the uh, the Z coordinate, so you know all the splits. And same here for the the second block, and then all this data will be connected, uh, uh, will be gathered together and uh, then supplied to this um, this create building domain component. So basically, what this component needs is all the um, the faces and all the splits. So you need to provide two tubes or several tubes. And then you only need to know what are the uh, the split coordinates. So in this case, we we actually provided all the uh, all the numbers of the uh, heights of the the floor, and also there's a column position. So basically, all the uh, all the columns. So you can actually add more columns if you connect to this one. And by default, it will basically put columns along its edge. And it will automatically, and this component, and this is a, a grasshopper component, and this component will automatically split 
your floors and also your faces and for the, the bracing designs and also create all the columns. So hopefully this is easy enough for you to uh, to use other than like uh, thinking about how you can you can create suitable domains for Paragon. So I'll hide this. And then in this particular version, we uh, the nodes are created in the uh, Cartesian node grid. And again, it's all created here. And we don't actually use Paragon to create other nodes because sometimes it doesn't know a special setting. I mean, because sometimes you got two blocks and you do want all the points to match to each, each other. And if you use some automated like uh, algorithm to generate all the nodes, and sometimes they don't match to each other, and you will get some really weird designs. And hopefully in the future we can adjust this. However, for this version, and we decided to only use the uh, some special rules to create all the no all the nodes. And here, to generate the nodal grids, and you only need to specify the nodal distance. For example, here is the the x distance is five meter, and the y distance is also five meter. And we'll basically we'll slice all the domains and create all the nodes and um, and the column locations for you. For some reasons, my PC goes really really slowly. I don't know what happened. But, I can uh, still, still, still see and hear you fine, Linway. I, I wonder yeah, if, it's, like, um, if it's a, if it's a possibility if if we can solicit questions from the um, from the audience, anything that we'd like Linware to go back to? Because um, I think you've, you've gone a bit of a, a lightning tour through through lots of different things. And uh, for this one, yeah, for this one probably it's too fast. But for the previous three examples, I think they they do they don't have lots of content to uh, to explore. No, but for but this one, <laughs> I do. So if, if, if people use the if any, people do have any questions while Linware is uh, slightly struggling with the machine, any any. Uh, any questions? Um, anything? It's not clear. So, so basically, what we just to sort of go back to the big picture. Uh, what we tried to do in version four is add a, a few features, either to do with buckling or to do with with, with grillages, really. So, and the buckling, local and global stability, um, and for the grillages use them in isolation or use them in conjunction with bracing so if anybody's got any any questions then please do um do do do, do use the chat box and uh, we can uh, we can ask limwe to to go back to it it doesn't look like there's any anything has come in so um yeah we that means I can continue, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, I just uh, try to play around with the, um, the the plugging and see what happens. And we do realize there are some um, some problems with the um, the multiple domain stuff, and we are busily uh, working to fix it. And uh, so for this, this building design, we can actually change our our floor plan and see if we got something more interesting. And uh, for example, here. So here I've just tried to use a different tower design, for example. And uh, if I use different uh, example, I just change the tower location and see what happens. I mean, just do it randomly. I, I didn't uh, do it before. So I don't know what could happen, but let's see. <laughs> so I changed the... Um, the floor at this machine becomes really slow. Uh, I'll see how long it takes to solve it. <laughs> Seems it's struggling. I think it's when you're sharing your screen, um, mine often does the same. It, it slows down, it slows down gradually and, and I can see a very clear lag. Oh, we got something. Good. So if I show the floors, and uh, one way to, to, to have a better visualization, 
if I as a sort of experience is just select this uh, this output and you, you basically uh, see the floors and the, the bracings and the grillage in different colors then you get better idea of what's going on so if you move it away then you you get a different design yeah that's uh, expected yeah. and for example and I know in practical buildings you don't you don't actually have this very long or you, you you need to avoid these very long things. That means sometimes you put some internal columns in. So we see how we can we can actually do that and see how that will affect our solution. So if we want to put more like columns other than like uh, new columns, then you just need to add more points to this uh, to the column point input of the uh, create building domain component. So here I just type point and again I would just uh, need to set multiple points then I'm not very happy for example with those um, very long oh no yeah, I just add some points and press enter hopefully now I got yeah I got oh this is really laggy I don't know why and uh, sh sh press shift and add it to the point we also we yeah, uh, we see if the, co the the actual columns have been created uh, Apologize. It, it, it takes a long time on my machine at the moment. It slows down significantly. When I started, it's uh, screen sharing. Yeah, no, it's there. So if we select all the columns, if we select all the columns, then you can you can see actually uh, we we got our new columns. So that's correct. Then we just need to. Uh, uh, disable and enable it. It takes 3.9 seconds. <laughs> That's a bit strange. Yeah. At least it's doing something. And uh, yeah, and we got a new solution with with the uh, all the the new internal columns. So that will hopefully allow you to uh, perform some parametric studies by, for example, varying the column locations or the number of columns. And also, the process is relatively fast. It's not as fast as the uh, the chart problems because now obviously we got more design elements but it's still I think it's still acceptable from my point of view so yeah I think that's uh, pretty much of the um, things I want to mention in in this in this demo and do let us know if you got any any questions because I can't see any at the moment Okay, I've just got I've got a question. Um, have you compared the results from other analytical software such as SAP 2000? So just to be clear, we're we're doing layout optimization here. It is not doing um, a normal structural analysis where we know the locations of all the beams and, and columns in advance. This is for use at the conceptual design stage in proposing where efficient layouts of beams and columns are. Now clearly, after we've got the concept design, we can do a more detailed analysis and we could uh, potentially use tools such as SAP 2000 or tools built into a Rhino Grasshopper such as Scramba 3D. So there's, there's lots of options, but the key thing is that this is, this is not an analysis program, absolutely not. This is a design program. In, in general, I would say structural engineers have been very well served with analysis packages. 
over the last 40, 50 years, they've been incredibly badly served by design packages. So it's been left to people to use their intuition to come up with um, solutions and, and then do lots of analysis of the solution. This is entirely different. And I think that probably um, leads us naturally, I think, uh, if, if there's nothing else, Lin, we're into the, into the mm. panel discussion. Is that okay? Yeah, I basically finished my demo. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Th th thanks very much. Um, I'm going to um, take over the, um, the screen. And this brings me to the panel discussion. And I will also share my webcam. And I've asked the, the other panelists to please share their webcams as well. So we're very uh, lucky to have um, Vincenzo Real from Arup, Amanda Williamson also from Arup, Paul Shepard from University of Bath, and Tom Pritchard from Limit State who've been developing Peregrine. And what we'd like to do is just uh, think about where next. So as I just mentioned, these tools of the sort you've just seen on screen have not been routinely available not been available at all to structural designers you've seen a little bit about what what's possible but it's fairly early stage um, so the question is where next so I'll hand over first of all to Vincenzo who perhaps would uh, be able to say a few words about um, where next um, as far as he's concerned so um, take it away Vincenzo so can you hear me yes okay um so uh well thank you very much uh matthew and thank you very much Linway, for showing the new uh, features of um, uh, peregrine i think um just by looking at this there are um, multiple scenarios that opens up open up um i mean i think i, I mean i can just briefly mention what we're using peregrine at the moment and I want to say that the previous um, um, version, uh, we actually used it on a couple of existing projects. Um, and the the idea, I mean, the the the, the the reason why we were using it was to try to define um, optimal layouts, for example, for multiple um, trusses supporting uh, floor plates of uh, office slabs. So that was one possible application we used it for. Um, so in that case, it was a little bit more like a traditional way to use uh, topological optimization. So the problem is uh, more or less already defined. What you want to do is you want to use the minimum amount of material. Um, I think from what we have seen today, um, and also, I mean, I think this is something we tried to push a little bit in the past. Um, the one of the great potentiality of uh, the plugin is that you can use it not only to optimize a solution which you have more or less already defined but as Matthew was saying just now and as Ning Wei was saying um, actually to research into possible solution to research into possible domains because when you start linking um, the stability system with the floor plates it's really difficult to um, imagine to have an holistic approach when you actually are trying to skimming it. While if you if you use it through Peregrine and you connect the different system, you start seeing some correlation between vertical and horizontal elements. Therefore, just by looking at a different option, you can come up with new and uh, more interesting, potentially way more efficient solutions. So I think it's very important that we are moving from just uh, uh, topological optimization in this strict sense, which is uh, removing the material, which is something other softwares are doing as well, to uh, a wider um, concept design applied to the building as a whole. I think this is something which has a really lot of potential. And um, another thing that was um, I was thinking when I was looking at the grillage system is that so far we have thought, I mean, we are, we are 
push to think at this element, trust element as um, still element connecting one to another. But uh, when I start seeing these uh, slabs, um, which might have a high level of redundancy because it looks sometimes there are a lot of moment connection. I started thinking, well, maybe this could be also the start of how we can uh, implement this in new materials, for example, I don't know, in concrete or in composite elements. Can we actually uh, consider all those elements as a continuous um, set of elements with a different material or with, with a different set of materials? So I think that's something we should be um, looking at. And in fact, and I'm just going to keep it short, but what I wanted to say is that I've used actually a few times the um, web tool uh, for of the layout of optimization, uh, not to design classes, but to think about strut and tie diagrams within concrete. And I think it was very powerful to see it because sometimes, I mean, what we usually do is we just draw the strut and tie diagrams and we try to, to solve it. But when it's very complex system either you go to finite element software and you try you start trying to um, check uh, the distribution of compression and tension within a continuous um, set of 2d elements while if you if you use this, the the layout optimization you start seeing that the actual diagrammatic um, um, description of the stratum tie which can be dealt with the uh, compression struts in concrete and tension uh, through the river. And I think for some uh, interesting and unusual configuration, um, I use it, for example, for a corbel design, it was quite helpful to, to see um, the answer from the software and trying to basically um, uh, match our initial assumption our, our, um, and, and sketches to what we were seeing here. And especially exactly if you have holes, if you have something which is a little bit more complex than um, something you can quickly do by hand, I think it gives you some ideas also on how to develop further your design. So if I can say the two main things, the two main um, um, points that I would like to, to see developed, and I think in our we will try to push them, are um, this uh, application like easy of use in everyday design, in concept design, also the holistic approach. So how can we design, how can we optimize not only the stability system, but the building as a whole, which I think is something very uh, important and very promising. Thanks, Vincenzo. Um, that, that's great. If people have questions during the, the process, um, of the panel discussion, please feel free to um, to raise them, and we will we will cover those uh, as they appear. Um, in the moment, um, the questions we've 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 had so far have obviously been um, quite technical to do with usage of the plugin following Limway's um, demonstration. But please do feel free to uh, um, respond to the panel discussion as well. Okay, I'm going to pass over now to uh, Amanda Williamson, also from Arup, who um, um, will say a few words about um, next steps from her perspective. So, fire away, Amanda. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say that I think the main usage I've had for Peregrine, as I think most of the projects I've been working on, have been much further along, so not for concept design, but for when we've already got a design and then being able to benchmark it against sort of optimum layouts and tonnages so we can show our clients sort of where we are in terms of sort of optimum carbon usage and so whether there's a way of, um, sort of developing peregrine along the sort of sustainability front and how we can use it to benchmark our projects. Yeah, that's certainly, um, and certainly something that um, we thought about in the past. It's not something that um, is is built in to the software, although you can um, um, try a whole series of different um, inputs uh, in terms of simplification and so on, and see what the influence of those is on the um, on the solution in terms of percentage difference. So you can see whether for example, if you draw in a Warren truss, you might see that that's um, you know 15% heavier than the optimized truss. So it, it's been done in a narrow sense, but certainly not 
yet been done in the in the um, the whole building context. Um, any other comments, uh, Amanda? Not stop my head, no. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, hand over then to uh, to Paul Shepherd from the University of Bath, who uh, was involved in the original EPSSC funded build up project which which led to the sort of prototype version of this um, so any thoughts Paul on on next steps uh, well I, uh, it's come on a long way since I last saw it I'll definitely say that so that's great um, I, I think my in a way my to sum up my thoughts is that why isn't everyone using this right we why haven't we got thousands of people on the call because um you know there's a climate emergency it's not a build something simple and cheap emergency we need to start saving material and not just making things the same everywhere for the sake of it and I think as people take that more seriously, they're going to need tools like these. Um, I really like the benchmark point that Amanda made because, you know, people, you 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 put a number of 5.6 up, a regular grillage versus a non-regular one. And people just, you know, here's a job, right, what, what space beams have I got? And off they go, show it through some standard software and it's just no longer good enough. So I think this... I think the real selling point for this is that it's in Grasshopper actually because it fits the workflow that people use and you get for free access to all the other tools, the complex geometries, the robot controlling ones and the finite elements and all that. So I think um, just the fact that people are thinking about this, I think we Genzo said by looking at the solutions but it, even before that just having thought about opening peregrine is a, is a good start in that people aren't just you know knee-jerk reaction doing regular grids and they're thinking what could we do to save some material here so i i mean i know it's got you've got a long to-do list of software developers that you already know you'd like it to do lots of other things and the the research and the theory that we developed is still ahead of what's implemented in the plugin. So I know there's a long to-do list, and I'm sure there'll be a Peregrine 5, 6, and 7. Um, but I think it's great to see it slotting into something that people are using. And, you know, people like Arup are now saying, yeah, we scheme design all these things, or concept design all these things in it before we start, or we benchmark against it. Thanks, Paul. Um, move on to um, the final in, opening words from our final panelist, um, Tom Pritchard from Limit State, um, who are involved in the development of Peregrine. Over to you, Tom. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, apologies that people can't actually see me on screen. Um, I don't have a webcam available here. I guess firstly, just wanted to acknowledge what an exciting development the software is, both from um, a company perspective and also for me personally, because the technology goes way beyond that which was available back when I was a student. And it's, as Paul was saying, all presented in a package that's user-friendly and also well-established within the civil and structural engineering sector. And what we at Limit State are hoping Peregrine can and will deliver is this opportunity for users to obtain a much clearer understanding of, firstly, what an optimal structural form actually looks like, and secondly, what effect taking into account real-life aspects of structural design has on these layouts. Um, obviously, it's allowing us to make quick and, most importantly, informed decisions about how structures could look and understands how much the repercussions of designing for minimum weight um, actually influences the form. Um, so the implications for conceptual design and also benchmarking, as Amanda discussed, could be quite massive. Um, however, also, as Paul alluded to, we're still relatively close to the start of this journey. And what we're really keen on at Limit State more than anything is to understand where yourselves, the engineers who will be putting this all into practice, want the software to go. Uh, we have this wonderful tool at our disposal, but, but where should we take it? What do you want to 
see it of it uh, what could we make better what do you want to do um, with it so that's essentially what I'm looking for and asking from people today on behalf of Limit State is to take on board the things that Linway has demonstrated um, use the software for yourselves and think about the ways in which it could be used and the direction in which we want to take it um, and obviously if you have feedback and things like that then feel free um, to get in touch with us I guess Matthew will probably there'll be a follow-up email or something going out to to everybody with with our details on it because um, we would be very happy to hear from anybody about their experience using the software thanks Tom uh, we're starting to get some some questions from the floor coming in so although I've got a few questions I'll, I'll, I'll ask those first so the first one is for Arup, so it's either Vincenzo or Amanda, and the question is, um, have your architects tried using this? I don't know who wants so, to go. <laughs> Amanda, have you, have you actually shown it to architects? No. So we've only, we've shown it to clients saying, you know, this is where we are against the optimum. But I think we actually sent the app over to the program over to architects. Um, I actually did for a couple of competitions um, and the idea um, at that time was actually to get on board the architect with the topological optimization so to see that um, getting the result of optimized trust from, um, from Peregrine could be a way to start a conversation about how a building could look like if you were looking under the light of topological optimization so it was not just about optimizing the structure but to express the structure make it part of the uh, of the building as uh, as an aesthetic also uh, component um, and I think some of them were very interested and also I mean I think as Paul was saying it's quite important that now the tool is out there um, for everyone to try through Grasshopper because there is huge community of architects using a SOP, I mean, probably 90% uh, nowadays know how to use it and play with it. And uh, I think this idea that uh, optimizing the material can can be not just um, a way we tackle the problem that we actually have, but also we embed it within the um, architectural process so that uh, it's not something that comes out as um, as a result of an optimization of something that we have already, but it's actually the driver for the design of the building. So uh, if uh, um, topologically it makes more sense to have a door in one location than in another, then we can take that on board. If uh, the structure is some, somewhere more complex than it would look like, but in reality it makes, allows us to make some uh, savings in material, then why not express it? Why not to find a way to um, to actually showcase what we're doing and um, I think sometimes there is a tendency of taking what you get from the software as the result I think I mean there is always space for flexibility so you see something you see a shape that is interesting is intriguing or maybe it's not actually what you want but nothing prevents us from tweaking it a little bit to implement it within uh, the architectural design so I think it's important always not to be to uh, to strict in looking at topological optimization is like a starting step for the design and then we can look at it and we can we can say oh, this is actually a very uh, interesting and promising uh, first step and then we can amend it we can amend it slightly maybe the solution will get on site for many reasons which are outside from the structural realm is not the most optimal from the material usage point of view but it started like the driver for that for that design was actually that material optimization so that in the end we actually get a new design with some uh, material optimization which as Paul was saying it's pretty important nowadays for the objective that we have for the next uh, 20 or 50 years. Thanks Vincenzo. Um, Paul you, you mentioned um, everybody should be using tools like this um, you're based at an educational institution um, and so you have a, a role to play in um, encouraging the next generation of engineers to to use tools like this. Um, 
um, how how far away are we from 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 doing that? I mean, what 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 well, what, what should we be doing to 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 make sure that the next generation of engineers are at least aware that these tools exist, and if if not, actually using them as an everyday um, tool in in practice? Um, yes, well, I I do use it. My department is a department of architecture and civil engineering. Uh, and I show this exact plugin to both the architects and the engineers. And um, I think in this last week they've been telling me that you know their group design projects where architects and engineers stand around a table and scribble on a big sheet of paper have turned into online Zoom meetings because they're not allowed within two meters of each other. And I think tools like this and and the collaborative way that we can display them and share them could give us a digital version, not as good, but the, the, the same thing that the questioner before said, what do you show it to architects? Well, architects should be playing around with this and experimenting with an engineer watching alongside and helping. And, and they can kind of fight over dragging the column left or right as they see fit, but they're getting this instant feedback of the repercussions of decisions so we don't get locking. So I'm doing my bit. It's not, I mean, we don't teach Rasopper that widely at universities yet. Um, and so even that's a hurdle before we start teaching Peregrine type approaches. Uh, and I think the best thing, if I had a magic wand, I would say that the, the institutions should be forcing universities to teach this stuff. Um, the, Universities are all accredited for their degrees, and if, if this became part of the syllabus, then there would be no choice. But um, yeah, it's an, it's a bit of an uphill struggle at the moment. The, the the students are very receptive to it, but there's just no space on the curriculum. Okay, thanks, uh, Amanda. Of, of the panelists, you're at the sort of the young, younger end end of the the age spectrum. Um, was this? <laughs> did you experience? Any of were you aware of this kind of technology when you did your degree, or did it come much later? Um, I think sort of towards final year projects, there are a couple of people in my sort of cohort who were using Grasshopper and things for their projects, but I didn't think it was ever um, taught to us. Of just people going out on their own for their own projects. Yeah, what I've yeah. seen is students pick it, pick it up on placement and then they come back to university and bring it back in with them. So if anything, industries. Yeah, some, some universities though are trying to pick up. I've been uh, teaching a couple of uh, programmatic engineering courses in different universities, such as Imperial College, for example. And I mean, you really see that students are really keen on picking up this tool, like courses, they were external courses, but they were like overbooked every time. So, and I mean, when you come in offices like Arup, it is something that we ask people to pick up because uh, you have to interface with architects which are using Grasshopper. There are some tools for topological optimization, but also structural analysis. And now we are trying to move also our um, structural software, which is um, Oasis GSA into Grasshopper. So I think it's something which is really important. I mean, the same way as I think coding is quite important for engineering, I think graphical coding such as uh, Grasshopper um, are those tools that students should be taught. They should have at least a little bit of uh, um, knowledge when they leave university because it's really helpful. And on the other hand, um, we are using Peregrine sometimes within our also to look at structure to teach young engineers or you know actually how the stresses work within compression and tension within a truss and uh, we've seen we have shown many times those um, um, exercises that we give to uh, to people or to students and ask them what do you think is the most optimal stress and I think it's, it's really nice to have a feedback a real-time feedback with a tool such as Grasshopper um, that can help you while you play with it to learn how structures work Thanks. So, so we've we've said that the, we want the next generation to be more familiar with with, with tools like Rhino Grasshopper 
and obviously naturally peregrine. On the other hand, um, it's going to take you know decades for us that there's there's people to come through. We've got a climate emergency where we need to be focusing on material usage now, or, or we should have been focusing on it for for some years uh, when we haven't been. Um, is 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 there a big digital skills gap? Is that is that the big the big issue we need to be be focusing more on training mid mid career professionals? Or actually, I, I think uh, Vincenzo, you mentioned that you really liked the the layout web app because it was so simple. Is this actually too complicated? It's too 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 geeky um, for for you know a, a mainstream mid career. Um, engineer to actually <clears throat> to pick up i mean what 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 are the solutions to the obvious barriers that we we see before us i guess and I, you, you've been doing quite a lot of talking vincenzo but um, perhaps you talk talk a little bit more and, and and give me your angle on that um yeah i mean i think that's that's true what you're saying um maybe they shall not the young people because the young people are capable of picking it up very quickly and i mean um I saw a lot of them that just because they're very interested and they have the mindset uh, and they like um, novel things, they um, very quick in picking it up. The issue is having a general culture of uh, using digital tools, and sometimes there is—I mean, it's true—there is some resistance within the the industry. Um, maybe sometimes there, there are reasons why there is this industry because they. Um, don't feel that these tools are developed enough or they are quite or maybe because people are confident with the solution that they have used for years and they don't just want they don't just don't want to change them because it requires some effort but um, as we are saying um, and I think maybe from this point of view it should be something that comes from above like rules regulations if we are pushed to optimize from um, a legal point of view from uh, if there are incentives to optimize our building because we have to because I mean there, there is a big crisis which is coming up and I mean resources are getting more and more limited um, I think this resistance should be overcome and um, if, it, if, if, if we can't, I mean, what, what we can do is to show example, propose new tool. Um, I think we need some backup from legislation in order to push people to actually uh, optimize at the most the buildings and that we are designing. Because if we keep doing things as we have been doing for the last 50, 100 years, then we're probably going to be in a very bad situation in 20 years from now. Well, if there's any, if any consolation, I've got um, a nice a question. A questioner has said, I'm 68 years old and find this approach fascinating and will use it on my current projects. So I think, we've, you know, that's that's very, very positive contribution. Mm. So thanks. Thanks to that, that person. Um, um, I'm just um, running out of time. Um, I just got Finally, move on to you, Tom, and just uh, any any observations from perhaps sitting on the other side of the fence, dealing with um, support queries and um, and the like for Peregrine, the previous versions of Peregrine. And what what is there anything that we've, we're hearing from the community that would push us in a particular direction? Are there any areas that uh, um, potentially we could um, we we could focus on? Uh, if we have a sort of bottom-up user-centric perspective, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think from a, a support point of view, a lot of the the feedback we're getting is very positive, um, and people are generally seeing what the um, the promise of the software is in terms of like we've been mentioning sort of the conceptual design um so a lot of the the requests have been surrounding i guess um things that would aid them enable in being able to do that and then present those conceptual designs um to either clients or to colleagues and things like that so so things that um will help them um describe um either 
and I'm guessing this is coming back um, to what we've been talking about as well, um, describe what the potential savings are, what the potential benefits of the, the optimization process are, um, and get that across in a, a nice, simple, and concise way to um, people who want to know about it. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's things along those lines that we've been generally um, getting from from users of the software um, and certainly it's again just if anybody has um, experiences that they wish to to share with us or requests that they have then we are always um, at limit state very sort of happy to try and take those on board as we're developing the software and, and trying to make it better for, for those end users. Okay thanks Tom. Um, we have um, probably got more more questions than we can deal with. Um, the, the questions that have come in um, mostly um, not related to Nexus, it's more to do with um, specific questions about whether we're using the lower upper bound theorem of plasticity um, and comparisons with with Dynamo and so forth. We will answer those questions uh, outside this meeting. So if you haven't got an answer um, so far, don't worry, you will, it will come through to you. So I think, as I said, we're out of time. So I'd just like to, to thank um, Linway for his um, his hands-on demo. Um, hopefully that that proved proved useful and wet your appetite, so to speak, to, uh, um, to to how this this tool might be used. It is a technology preview version, so uh, we wouldn't recommend that you you use it for um, for general use. Um, there are there's more work needed before it's it's suitable for final release. So it's it's really there as a as a as a tool to um, um, explore. Uh, do do feedback to um, us any any issues or any any um, suggestions that you have. However, um, I will be following this event up with a, an email. Um, hopefully, we'll have a, a link to the recording and also a, a contact email that you can fire any uh, queries or suggestions to us. So. Thanks also to the, um, the panelists, uh, Vincenzo Real, uh, Amanda Williamson, who stepped in at very short notice uh, after uh, Catherine Rankin was unfortunately unable to um, uh, attend. So thanks very much, Amanda, uh, uh, to Paul Shepard, and also finally to, to Tom Pritchard. Uh, and then finally, thanks to everybody for joining this, this event. I hope you found it useful, and uh, perhaps uh, see you again at some days in the future. Thanks very much, and goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thanks.